Hey everyone, welcome back. Okay, you made it through the AJE module. The purpose of this video and this worksheet is for those of you who want to practice. And um, congratulations for taking that opportunity because I really truly believe the more you practice your accounting skills, the more they'll stick with you and the easier they'll be to recall, um, whether it's on a test situation or in a life situation, whether or not you go on to be accountants, um, knowing and understanding these concepts is going to be really important to your business career. Okay, so to really maximize the learning opportunities within this, what I'd like you to do is either download and print out or do it on the screen, um, this worksheet, <clears throat> and go through, do as much of it as you can, um, skip the parts that you're not sure about, and then come back and we'll do it together. Um, we're going to start by booking some AJEs. Then the second step is going to be we're going to take those AJEs and add them to the T accounts we created in the uh, in module three. Um, and then we're going to create a trial balance and financial statements as well as doing closing journal entries. Um, so <clears throat> by going through and doing this worksheet, you are going to get to practice not only what you learned in module two, I mean, in module four, um, AJEs, but also what you learned in module three, journal entries to financial statements. So awesome opportunity. Congrats to you for taking advantage of it. All right. So if you haven't gone through and tried it on your own, stop the video here. And for those of you who said, yep, I've already done exactly what you said, then let's go through and review our work. All right. So um, first, uh, in the first worksheet, we're going to record three journal entries, and then we're going to prepare the adjusting journal entries. And that should be bolded. Okay. All right. So the first journal entry is we sold a two-year subscription on account for $48,000. Okay. So the on account tells us we're going to debit accounts receivable. And we're going to debit that for the whole $48,000. Okay, um, oh, I already had the debit there. Okay, that's all right. And then we're gonna credit, this is a two-year subscription. It's gonna eventually be revenue, but it's not revenue yet, because we have to deliver over the next two years. So right now we have a liability, and we call that liability unearned revenue. And we're gonna credit unearned revenue for 48,000, okay. Let me type that so that my typos disappear. Okay. Our next um, transaction is we purchased a 12 month insurance policy. <clears throat> so, um, and we purchased it for cash. So we know we're going to have a credit of cash for 1200 or 1800. What's our debit? So normally this would go to insurance expense, but we're going to be using this up over the next 12 months. So we have an asset. We've paid for an asset that we haven't used up yet. And we call that prepaid expense. We could do prepaid expense dash insurance, or we could just call it prepaid insurance, but we're just going to call it prepaid expense right now to keep it simple. And that's going to be 1800. Okay. These first two transactions, obviously, when we get to the end of the month, they're going to require an AJE. But for now, we're just booking the original transaction. And we purchased equipment for 3600 cash. The equipment has a useful life of three years and a salvage value of zero. Okay, so uh, we purchased equipment for 3600 and um, we credit cash because we paid cash for it. So this one's actually a little more straightforward. All right, so those are our three transactions. Now, fast forward, and we're at the end of the month. We are at the end of February, and we need to book our internal adjusting journal entries. Remember, those first three entries, those were with someone else. Someone else knew about those. These are our internal entries. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is recognize one month's revenue from our subscription. So we said our subscription was 48,000 for two years. So if I just go over the side here and I say plus 48,000, and I'm gonna divide it by 24 months, 
two years have 24 months, then it's going to be 2000 a month is the amount of revenue I'm going to recognize. So at the end of the month, I'm going to debit unearned revenue for 2000 and I'm going to credit revenue for 2000. Okay. Um, and I'm going to do that every month for 24 months or the two year period of the subscription. All right. Um, then I'm going to recognize one month's insurance expense. Okay, so if I go up here, I had a 12 month insurance policy for $800. So I'm going to do 800 divided by 12. And my insurance expense every month is going to be $150. So I'm going to go ahead and record that as my AJE. I'm going to debit insurance expense for $150. And I'm going to credit prepaid expense $150. All right, and I will do that every month for a month for 12 uh, for a year. So for 12 months. All right, then I'm going to recognize one month's depreciation. So let me go up here. Remember depreciation, the formula equal is cost minus salvage divided by useful life. So in this case, my cost was 3,600 minus my salvage value of zero divided by, um, it's a three year useful life. So three times 12 is 36 months. I'll be depreciating this. I didn't like that zero. I just add some parentheses here. <clears throat> Then it'll tell me my depreciation is $100 a month. So I'm going to go ahead and go down here. And remember, this one's kind of funny. I'm going to debit depreciation expense for 100. And I'm going to credit an account called accumulated depreciation. And that is a contra asset account. It sits with the assets, but it has a natural credit balance. OK. Um, and then I'm going to provide services for the customer in the amount of 40,000. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. This is something new. Let's take a look. All right. So we on, on February 29th, we find out that we've provided service for a customer in the amount of $40,000, but we haven't billed them yet. Okay. So the customer, they know that they receive services, but it, there's been no invoice exchanged. So from their perspective, they're like, ah, whatever. Um, but we know that we want to book revenue in the period we earned it. And we earned $40,000 this month, right? We, we earned it. We, we've provided the services. Um, but we haven't billed them yet. So we're going to book an AJE debiting accrued revenue. That's revenue we haven't billed yet. Remember, it's just like accounts. Uh, receivable, except it hasn't been billed for 40,000. And we're going to credit revenue because the purpose of this AJE is to book revenue in the correct period, which is what we're doing. Even though we haven't sent a bill, we're still going to record the revenue. And the offset will be accrued revenue. When we go ahead and bill it, then we will debit accounts receivable and we'll credit out that accounts received or the accrued revenue. That's just a little placeholder. All right. So moving down. We also realize on the last day of the month that we have incurred legal fees of 3000 during the month. OK, we went, we talked to our lawyer, we incurred legal fees of 3000. Um, but we haven't gotten the bill yet. Those lawyers, they are so slow to bill. OK, um, but I know I want to record that legal expense because it was incurred in February. And um, so the, the matching principle says that I need to book it in this period when it was in, uh, occur, incurred. All right. so. I'm going to debit legal expense for 3000 and I'm going to credit accrued expense 3000. Remember accrued expense is just like accounts payable except we haven't gotten the bill yet. So when we want to accrue revenue meaning we want to book revenue in the correct period but we don't have uh, we haven't sent an invoice then we debit accrued revenue. When we need to accrue our expenses because we've incurred expense but haven't received the bill, then we credit accrued expense. All right, 
Uh, join me in the next video and we will do the T counts associated with this. See you then.